Ansaria, senior advocate, who will speak to us for about 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Thereafter, we'll invite Lady Dorian and Mr. Donald Dare. After they have made their presentations, we will open up the discussions through questions and answer. I thank you. Namaste. Good morning. Chairperson of the today's session, Plexidus Tolery. My co-panelists, Lady Dorian and Donald Dea, delegates and members of the Commonwealth Law Association, which has now become a Commonwealth a CLA family. That's how I have fed last two days. I welcome you all to this great country, India, to this place, Goa. Today we are assembled here in this session to see, to examine and to ponder over it whether the freedom of movement in a post-COVID world are internal passports on the rise. Friends, COVID-19, we never thought of it, if there is anything such happens. It has impact profoundly across the globe, affecting every aspect of our movement, of our life. It has changed human behavior in all manifestations the way we socialize, the way we talk, the way we eat, the way we dress, the way we maintain hygiene, the way we travel, and even the way the paper committee selected the topics of today's discussion. I find there are six topics relating to COVID out of the many. This is starting with the emergency powers of the government, employer responsibility, digitization, and refugee rights, etc., etc. Friends, COVID has changed our entire behavioral pattern. So whether, what are the competing rights of freedom of movement and restrictions on the freedom of movement? As the chairperson has said, freedom of movement is a fundamental, inalienable right recognized by various international treaties. The first recognition officially was perhaps Union Universal Declaration of Human Rights ratified by 193 countries in Paris in 1948, which says everyone has right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. Thereafter, the various countries I find I have examined all 56 Commonwealth countries as right of freedom of movement as a fundamental right recognized in their respective constitution. I have elaborated them in the final presentation, it will be there. Even our constitution, constitution article 191D guarantees every citizen to move freely throughout the territory of India, subject only to one limitation, reasonable restrictions in the interest of public. The friends, mobility, human mobility, has historically been transformed with the advent of science. Initially, our forefathers used to travel on foot. I am told my four, our forefathers, maybe about 200 years back, traveled from one part of the India to other part of the India. Took six months they were on foot. Then started using animals and boats and horses. Now with the trains and, and uh, aeroplanes, etc., we go to any place in the world. Our lust for traveling has also grown many fold. So travel is very important right for any human being. And it is important not only its right in itself, it helps the other right, such as the right to education. Unless we travel, we don't have a good education right to work, right to speech, right to access good health, care, all depends on whether you have a right to movement. <clears throat> Unless you have a right to movement, you may not be able to enjoy other rights guaranteed by the various constitutions or by 
which are general inherent right in every human being. Friends, now I come, what is passport? We are talking of internal passport, but what is the concept of passport? According to me, passport is a document issued by a sovereign country recognizing the status of its subjects asking for safe passage in another sovereign country. Perhaps the first mention of passport was in 445 BC in the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament where Nehemiah was asked to rebuild Jerusalem and was given letter by the king granting safe passage to the kingdom of Judah. Then we had Chinese Heng Dynasty gave passports in 2006. Formally, the concept of the present passport system can be credited to Henry VI, King of England, <clears throat> as a means of identity of their subjects, which led the British Parliament to enact Safe Passage Conduct Act in 1414. Thereafter, after World War I, it has become an international norm of having passport to travel in a different country, in a sovereign country from one country to another. Now what are the internal passports? I was struggling to find out the expression, the meaning of the word internal passport. It's a document which regulates your movement within your own country. Though you have a fundamental right to move from one place to another within your country without any further restriction, without any requirement, except that you have a travel ticket. Without travel ticket also people do move, but no other government requirement, no other official communications are required. But it was there at some point of time earlier also. For example, Russian Empire introduced internal passport in 1860 to regulate the movement of prisons, to prevent them from escaping in serfdom. They were almost wanted labor, so they didn't want to prevent, so they would keep an internal passport, you cannot go from one place to another. I understand in Canada also in 1885, there were restrictions on movement of indigenous Canadian people within the country. You require some pass. Okay. Nazis introduced Kankate during the third Nishida in 1933 to 1945, when they used to control the movement of Jews and other minority groups as a means of regulating the, the movement. Now, with the onslaught of COVID-19, why did we require our internal passports? It was unknown, we didn't know what to do. We depended upon the experts, WHO, World Health Organization, told us that wherever human beings go, the virus travels with it. From Wuhan to Antarctica, no state was left untouched. With human beings, virus travel. And within two months, December 19 and January 2020, the whole world was in its grip. We didn't know what to do. Perhaps one of the measures thought that, yes, if human beings' restrictions or our, our traveling restrictions are put, the virus may be stopped, may be limited. So they started the lockdown, what you call, complete lockdown, no movement. Then gradually started, you can move with some travel documents, you can move with negative uh, health reports that you are not. Earlier you used to always say, be positive, be positive. Now we say, be negative, be negative. That's how our concept changed. You used to say, save water, don't waste water. Now you say that, all right, wash your water. Uh, wash your hands with more and more water, at least for 30 seconds. Introduce the system of quarantine. That's how the internal passports started. It's phase through globally and in India. In India, we had lockdown on 24th March 2020. The first time we ever thought there can be anything of such thing happen. The most vulnerable people and most affected were the daily wages who were earning daily bread and if they don't earn on a particular day, they can't support the family, they will live in hunger. Now the government closed all the travel movements, they closed the trains, they closed the buses, they closed the... They had no, op no option. Some arrangements were made for food, but then yes, it is very limited and very precarious. They thought we'll go back to our home. 
there also you will find in very bad conditions people traveling with the minimum belongings in their head, child on their shoulder and no food to eat. That's how the, the COVID impacted every human being, mostly the marginalized section of the society. There also you require a negative report. State boundaries are closed from one state to another. You cannot go. In Delhi where we live, most many of our friends live, we are surrounded by two states at least immediately. So if you go even five kilometers where most many of our friends stay, you require a negative past a negative uh, COVID report, <coughs> otherwise you cannot travel. So, and this same was also in various other countries of the world, like United Kingdom, European Union, France, you go to any places where the, the uh, our parties, any dining, all, you have to have 20 people, not more than 30 people. Only exception was, when the politicians wanted, there was an election in our country, when the politicians wanted an election meetings, oh, they will invite hundreds and thousands of people, come, come over, come over. Unless you have so many people, uh, we can't win election, at least we have to show our strength. So that is one exception which the government did it for itself, which I find it very strange. You, I could attend wedding of a brother of mine, which is very near to my place, because there were COVID restrictions, no interstate movement. But I found on the same night on the television that tens of thousands of people have assembled for an election meeting, which led even the Chief Justice of a High Court to say the election commission should be prosecuted for the offense of murder. With that observation, the particular judge was transferred from one place to another. But we say that we must have a similar parameter for a common man and for the government who, who administers those laws with restrictions. You cannot have two different parameters, two different principles for one applicable for a performance man, another when the government wants that yes, people must assemble. Now friends, this internal passport has many benefits. It improved public health and safety because the virus traveled with the human body. It didn't travel fortunately in the air. It introduced event, um, efficient management of public events. You move, move, put restrictions. In our Indian weddings, we have 500 people, we have 1,000 people. They are restricted to 50 people on those times. It streamlined also identification of the people who are traveling from one place to another. But most serious concern was regarding the privacy of the people, the government surveillance that yes, you have to upload your details where you are traveling. Definitely, there is a privacy concern. Definitely, there are concerns about the surveillance of the state, which need to be used only, on, only if it is required in the larger public interest, that is to maintain a public health. We were running through a very difficult time. We have lost many of our friends. Each one of us has lost many of our friends and family members. I also went to the hospital and in the hospital, in one room, we have four persons every day, people were changing. That was a very difficult situation. At that point of time, yes, we had to address this issue of hygiene, etc. Now, one more thing which always hurts me is whether without COVID also, are there any inter internal passport system that you require to permits to travel within your own country. I do not know globally. In India, we had, at the British time, what is called Eastern Bengal, Bengal Frontier Revolution of 1873, where in certain travel areas from the where place why I come in the northeastern states, we say every Indian, any Indian who wish to go there has to obtain a permit. They must apply to the government, feed in their data, give it details, where they are going, how many days they are going, where they will stay. It continues even today. At least in four states in the northeastern part of the country where I come, you require an in inner line permit to travel in that place. It's very hurting that within my own country, I have to apply and I have to show that document when I enter that state. 
I have been telling this to some part of the country. In that part of the country, it's very difficult. They think that if our people from other part of the country come, it affects our demography, etc. But then we are one country. Taxpayers' money is being paid through all the, all the states. So this is a concern which I would request the CLA to take it up whether internal passports are required other than for public health in the country. In any country, if there is, then it should not be there. Finally, as my time, I think, is only over almost another 30 seconds. So, there are two competing principles, one public health, another is privacy. Please wait and then use only that much requirement which is essential ingredient for public health and for nothing else. It can be used only for legitimate public purposes to ensure that and should be ensured that the system which is there, it should be transparent, it is accountable, it is secure and does not violate the other's right. Thank you very much.